common folk videos out there will tell you that the best vegetables for the heart are gonna be vegetables that, I don't know, have anti-cholesterol effects. But we need to look at other aspects beyond that. Because when you look at the big picture of cardiovascular issues, a lot of it comes down to an inflammation issue. It comes down to an oxidative stress issue. Now, I am not a cardiologist. I am some dude on the internet, but I've been doing this for a long time. And I have a lot of hours stacked into this and understanding things. So let's just jump right into the very first one. Now, after today's video, I did put a link down below for Thrive Market. They are a sponsor on this channel, which allows us to do what we do. We produce a lot of content, but they're also where I do my grocery shopping these days. So it is an online membership-based grocery store that sorts by different diet type, but also really impacts us because it's cheaper than most items at the grocery store, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. So that is a 30% off discount link, 30% off your entire grocery order, then it gets delivered to your doorstep, plus you get a free $50 gift. So that link down below is for Thrive Market. Check them out after this video. Jumping right into the first one, it is beetroot. Now, some of you might say, okay, well, beets are going to be higher in sugar, so is that not good for the heart? Well, I mean, if you were to eat a ridiculous amount of beets, then I could see that theory. But in reality, when you look at cardiovascular disease risk, beets have two really powerful things going for them. And I'll kind of give you a strategy on how to eat them. Okay, so first off, they have an antioxidant that is pretty unique called betalane. Now, betalane has been demonstrated in other bodies of research to be very, very potent at helping the cells within our vascular system. Now, additionally, there was a study that was published in Food Chemistry that found that betalane had an impact on animal models when it came down to longevity. Now, the reason that it potentially had this impact on longevity wasn't because it did something magical on their body. It was actually more powerful than other vegetables. Now, why do we need to pay attention to this antioxidant capacity? Well, predominantly because when you are looking at how the heart functions, oxidative stress is a big driver for cardiovascular issues. In fact, when you look at kind of the big three, you do look at lipids, you do look at inflammation, you do look at oxidative stress. And of course, there's other markers as well. But the other piece that's interesting with beets that we've probably heard of before is that they're a vasodilator, okay? The nitric oxide effect. This has a huge impact on taking stress off the heart. So when you increase blood flow to the extremities because you are allowing blood vessels to relax and dilate, that is less reverse sort of pressure on the heart, right? So when you can actually pump blood and take care of the vessels, you in turn get to treat the heart better. So how do you consume beets? The best way that you could consume beets realistically is probably surrounding a workout period. Now, if you train fasted, that's a whole different story. But if you wanted to eat some beets prior to a workout, not only are you going to get more of a potential pump, but you also take the stress off the heart, right? Like you want to build your heart stronger, but if you're already suffering from some issues, you don't wanna be stressing the heart, right? That's why they actually caution people that have CVD against exercising hard because that's too much stress on the heart when you already have a problem. Now, additionally, spacing them out maybe every other day so that you're not getting this high sugar load because beets are pretty high in sugar as well. So you don't wanna be having them every day as that could probably add up, but a small amount here and there every other day might be a good solution. This next one is super interesting and one that I wouldn't have guessed a few years ago. It's broccoli. I know broccoli is powerful for hormones, right? It's a very powerful estrogen modulator because of what's called DIM and IC3. But the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a very interesting paper. This took a look at 134,000 subjects over four and a half years, okay? And they found some very interesting stuff directly related to cruciferous vegetables. So that's gonna be things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, but in this particular case, broccoli really takes the cake. They found that over this time period, looking at 134,000 people, that cruciferous vegetable intake was directly correlated with less death from cardiovascular disease. Now there could have been a number of different things, right? We have to be realistic. Were the people that were eating more cruciferous vegetables also just eating more veggies in general? Were they just eating cleaner? Do people that eat more cruciferous vegetables tend to have a healthier lifestyle otherwise? Yes, these are all valuable things, but then when we look at the data surrounding what's called sulforaphane, which is in cruciferous vegetables, 
it does really lead us to believe that maybe the broccoli was doing something. So sulforaphane can activate what's called the NRF2 pathway. That's where Dr. Rhonda Patrick has done a lot of work talking about this, but also essentially just stimulating our own endogenous antioxidant pathways. So when you're talking about taking care of your own internal organs, like I could go eat blueberries until I turn blue, but I'm not going to get the same antioxidant effect from those blueberries as I am from my body's own ability to neutralize free radicals. Our body inherently knows what's best. So what we do need to do is support our body's ability to neutralize these things. Sulforaphane allows our body to increase its antioxidant capacity itself, which is a self-regulating system that really knows what it's doing, more so than our conscious behavior of eating antioxidants. So that's what sulforaphane does. It increases your body's ability to neutralize them naturally. And this third and final one is super interesting because you can add it in really easily. And we're talking about lycopene from tomatoes. Now here's the thing. Raw tomatoes don't always work well for people. I do recommend that you stew them. I recommend you make a tomato sauce, whatever. The cool thing is, is even if you're not a big veggie person, you could cook this up and get a huge benefit. And we've seen like people talk about lycopene and like over-marketed hype, but let me break it down in a way that's actually scientific and legit. The European Journal of Public Health published a paper that took a look at over a thousand men over 11 and a half years. So out of 1,031 men, 194 of them ended up having myocardial infarctions, heart attacks, over this 11 and a half year period. You know what's interesting? All 194 men ended up having some kind of low level of serum lycopene and beta carotene. Well, well, what's the deal there? What are lycopene and beta carotene doing that's so important? Well, once again, it comes down to lycopene protecting our vessels, protecting our blood vessels. So when you look at your blood vessels or you think about it, do you think of just like a garden hose that's pumping blood? Like, I mean, your heart pumps and then all of a sudden you just are, are running blood through these garden hoses? Because we gotta remember that these blood vessels have epithelial cells, they have actual organisms, they have organelles, they have life, right? Like it's got these cells that need fuel, and if they get damaged, they don't work well. They need protecting. We need to take care of our vascular system. So is lycopene directly helping our heart? Not necessarily. It's helping our vascular system, our circulatory system, taking the pressure off of the heart. And beta carotene seems to be working in a slightly different way too, which that's a different topic for a different day. So lycopene and beta carotene seem to be critical. And again, when you look at the data of people that have heart attacks, they tend to be low serum lycopene. So you don't even need much. How much tomato do you actually need? About a half a tomato every other day is all you would need to get sufficient lycopene. That's like a quarter cup, if even that, of tomato sauce every two or three days. And you can cook it down, you can add chilies to it, and you can drizzle it on other things. It's that simple. Put it on your chicken, it practically adds no calories. It's like 15 calories and it's one of the most potent things you could do for your heart. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.